Hey, hey, party people. It is time to kick it old school with the good old fashioned rendering video. We're rendering plaid today. Check out the description box below for all of my rendering videos. Hit that subscribe button and let's go. Real quick, what is the difference between tartan and plaid? They are not interchangeable, okay? So all tartans are plaids, but not all plaids are tartans. All plaids are basically fabrics that have a stripe design typically three or more colors stripe design going along the grain and another stripe design going across the grain perpendicular now tartans have identical designs going along the grain and across the grain okay see this this one this one is green blue and black and when i fold it over diagonally it looks identical because the design the stripe design is the same along and across but this other one with a hundred different colors this is a non-tartan plaid because the stripes don't match up they do not look identical you know this little section here with all the little brown stripes it's a completely different design even though it's similar elements and you know the same colors and everything so it's a non-tartan plaid Okay, on to the rendering. We're doing this step-by-step. Step. step one, pick your medium and gather your materials. Okay, this will depend on maybe what your client wants, maybe what your teacher assigned, whatever you like to use for me. Um, I also like to choose depending on the texture of the fabric. For example, fuzzy ones, I like to do details in color pencil. And then something that's a little bit cleaner, like this more yellow one, I would maybe choose to uh, gel pen or ink fine liner, things like that. I'm going to demo in marker today and in gouache later. The biggest difference between marker and watercolor is that with watercolor, you have to wait for every layer of paint to dry before you move on to the next one. Otherwise, things get a little bit messy. So when I'm doing plaid renderings, I like lay down the base coat of the paint. And while that's drying, I will like paint the hair and then I'll do the next step. And then while that's drying, I'll paint the face, you know, back and forth like that. So I'm not wasting time. Step two, draw your garment, observing the weight thinness, bulkiness, drapiness of your fabric. You need to draw in your seams, your darts, pleats, tucks, any sewn details because the design of your plaid will break at these seams, okay? So if you just kind of like put like a big flat plaid across your whole garment, your illustration will look flat. And you know, some people like that. They're deliberately trying to create like a flat look, but that's, that has to be a stylistic choice, not because you didn't know how to make your figure look 3D, okay? I have a whole drawing clothes on bodies playlist to help you, which I'll link below. If you're serious about learning how to do stripes and plaid, I especially encourage you to really pay attention to that first one, drawing wraparounds, because it's gonna teach you how to draw the plaid stripes around the body so that it doesn't look flat, so that the stripes still look 3D around the body. Step three, lay down your base color and lay down your shadow color. Typically, when I'm doing a uh, shadow color, I just like to do it like one or two shades darker than the base color. So not just gray for all shadows, but like blue and a slightly darker blue, green and a slightly darker green. If you need a tutorial on how I shadow fashion illustration, I'll drop a link to that video in the description box below. But really quick, I do three kinds of shadow. Number one, I pick a light source diagonal from the figure and I shade the dark side away from the light, like sides of torso, sides of arms, sides of the neck, okay? Number two, I shadow the dark side under the light, like the bottom half of bust, the underside of bent limbs, the underside of the clavicle. And then I add drop shadows, like how this pleat fold casts a tiny shadow behind it, uh, drapes cast shadows to whatever's underneath it, how the chin casts a shadow onto the neck, how hems of clothes cast shadows onto the legs. Step four. This is the point where we have to shrink the plaid down so it scales properly with our figure. And I use my palm as a comparison measure, okay? 
Lay your palm down on your plaid and compare the size. Draw a comparable square using your figure, your illustration figure, their palm in comparison. If you have very small hands and you're drawing a big man's figure or vice versa, you know, adjust accordingly, but you get the idea. I like to sketch a little scrap practice little thing first. Sometimes I actually render a little practice swatch at the right size to test how the colors layer together. Step five, lightly sketch in the plaid. You don't need to add every detail now, but the main biggest stripes. Okay? If you're completely lost on how the plaid is going to look, drape the fabric on yourself or a dress form. If you don't have a big piece of the plaid, take a piece of cheap but similar fabric like a muslin and draw in some squares the same size as your main squares. On this gray and black one I'm rendering first, you know, the backdrop is gray and the big black stripes are the main stripe that I'm using as, you know, the guide to draw in first. And the big black stripes, the width across is a little bit, it's like give or take the width of my palm. And that's what I'm using as my size guide. When you are drawing in your plaid, Okay, there's a difference between the plaid scrunching because the fabric is scrunching and stretching the plaid because you want the stripes to go a particular way. Unless you're doing something very stretchy, don't stretch out your plaid. Keep the lines parallel and straight and you drape with the fabric. You fold and scrunch with the fabric. Okay. Go look at some plaid garments. Okay. If you want to render a big plaid circle skirt, go look at some photos of a big plaid circle skirt and you can see how the stripes lay with the drapes and mimic that with your specific plaid colors. I have a Pinterest board called Clothes Illustration References that feature photos of people wearing clothes that are good examples to look at to study drapes, how patterns lay, things like that, and I'll link it in the description box. Follow the shape of the garment. If it's super tight to the body, your stripes need to follow the contours of the body. If the garment is boxy, let the stripes follow the boxiness. Okay? The plaid stripes are going to break at seams. There are very few places where you can match the stripes precisely because of how the patterns are cut. Center front is one of them. Center front is nearly always straight unless it's on the bias. So it's pretty easy to match the stripes on say like a button down shirt, okay? But side seams would only match if they were perfectly straight on a boxy garment. Inseams and out seams on pants are curved around the hips. If you don't know the basics of pattern making, go look at a bunch of pictures of plaid pants. Look at how the stripes get cut off at the center back, at the sides, you know, at the inseam things like that. Number six, assess how much detail you need by using my eight foot rule. Take your swatch and stick it on the wall or your dress form and step back about eight feet. What you can see is how much detail you need to add. We're just gonna lean back and squint your eyes and let the details blur a little. When I look at a plaid like this, these skinny double lines will become one line, unless maybe I was rendering it life size. Step seven, as you're rendering, make sure you go to the edge of the garment and edges of the seams, or you'll get this weird halo effect, which again, will flatten out your illustration. Let's answer some common questions. Number one, what if the stripes are lighter than the background color? couple options. You can use opaque gouache on top of the base. This is one of the ways using gouache is better than marker. Regular watercolor won't give you this though because gouache is essentially opaque watercolor. Option two, lay down the lighter color first, add dark squares, and then add the other details on top. But this is a little tedious. Okay? You got to make sure your squares are crisp and square and not rounded at the corners too much. Number two, what about doing the whole thing in color pencil? I don't do fashion illustration with color pencil as the main medium. I don't have the patience or the time for it. But here's the thing about plaid and color pencil or color pencil in general. 
it's hard to layer color pencil on top of each other unless you are purposefully trying to blend the colors together. It's harder to, you know, lay down a solid red and then try to lay down a solid blue on top, even if the blue is darker than the red, because the, the, the medium doesn't want to like let them sit on top of each other like marker does. Okay, so you have to make sure you're not layering, but sitting the colors next to each other. Number three, what about doing it digitally? The steps are the same, except you get a handy dandy undo button and you don't have to worry about, you know, lighter colors on top of darker colors because you can just adjust the opacity for that sort of thing. Number four, do I have to fill in the whole garment with the plaid? No, especially if you're doing a really big garment, like a big ball gown or something like that. Aim for at least 80% of the garment 75 80 percent at least okay and you know there's an art to that okay don't just cut off the design abruptly somewhere and then just let one section be blank the purpose of these illustrations is to show off the design accurately and so if you do that people are going to think this is a placed print or you left this blank intentionally what you want to do is like let it fade out, like let ha let like some sections have less detail, like how I did with these pants. I got to stop saying pants to an international audience. I know what the British think when I say pants. So trousers, when you look at these gray plaid trousers, you know, there are some sections that have less detail. They're like faded in and out a little bit. But overall, you get the idea that it's an overall pant plaid trouser because there's no abrupt cutoff. Last, Zoe, I don't know much about grain lines. What do I do? Pick up a pattern making book. Any given pattern is going to be marked with a grain line. And, but most, not all, but most of the time the grain goes along the body part. Okay, so along the arm is the grain line. Along your torso is the grain line along the length of your leg is the grain line. But, you know, getting a basic pattern making book, I'll, you know, I'll drop my book recommendations in the description box, but getting a basic pattern making book, like just get a used one. And uh, kind of seeing like, oh, this is what pant patterns look like. Oh, this is what a jacket pattern looks like. And so when I drop the plaid on it, this is how it's gonna break at the seams. And you know, this is how it's gonna angle at the seams like that. or go look at a bunch of plaid garments, go check out my Pinterest board, uh, which again, I'll link below, you know, those kind of things. Just look at references around you, you know, the direction of the stripes on garments that are similar to what you're designing, whether it's like boxy baggy trousers or super tight leggings, whatever the garment is, get the style, observe the way the stripe is sitting and then mimic the direction of the stripes and how it's sitting and hitting the seams and mimic that pattern with your plaid. If you have any other questions, drop them below. Please share this video with the illustrator in your life. Subscribe, join the membership. I'm gonna try to do a live stream that's members only once I get critical mass going. Please like this video if you learned something new today and I'll see you in the next video.